Hello, my name is Wendell Bordelon with BMC Software. Today's topic is about cloud lifecycle management, tags, and how tags are used in, in deploying of new services. Now, basically, tags are a way of labeling the placement for a new service into a new network container. Where do we want it to be? We can also use tags for defining the matching between options. Right? So in a previous session, we've talked about options, we've talked about blueprints, and we're going to bring some of those concepts together in this. Now, tags belong to tag groups, and we'll see those pictures a little bit more. Uh, we'll put them together for you in a moment. In the meantime, what you basically need to know about tags is that tags are used to match what we have and where we want to deliver it. So let's start with the pizza menu. We've got the pizza environment, and we want to deliver our pizzas now. Right? So we call up. They say we'd like a pizza. So the question is, where does it need to go? So you see our pizza delivery form. Well, we need two pieces of information to make sure it gets to the right house. We need the number, and we need the street. So when George is riding the motorcycle out to get to the pizza delivery spot, he needs to know what street to get to and what number. And this is great until the first time he ends up at an apartment. So now he comes up to the street, and he gets to the right street, and he goes down the, to the right number, and it's an apartment house. Which apartment ordered the pizza? So we have to expand our delivery form to add the apartment. And if there's roommates, we need to know what customer. Right? We need to know who's getting the pizza. He delivers the pizza, everybody's happy. Well, that's great, and George is doing such a good job, we've decided to expand the business, and we now need to know where are we delivering. So we've added the city. If you're like in Houston, there's lots of little towns that really border one side of the street or the other. And street won't be unique necessarily. Right? We've got a first street, we've got a second street, a main street, and lots of these little towns. So how do you know which city? Well, we add that to our delivery form. Ultimately, what we've just defined is the tags for delivery to that pizza. So instead of delivery, now we're talking about deployment. So the tags determine where do we deliver that pizza. We need to know what the rules are for following those tags. So if you look, what we start off with is what city are we going to? Are we going to Bel Air? Are we going to Houston? Are we going to South University? Then what street? Are we at the right street? Do we go left or right? We find the appropriate number. If it's an apartment, we look for the apartment number. But if it's just a regular house, then the apartment number may be blank, or we don't care what the apartment is. Right? So keep this in mind as we talk about tags. And then the last one is, do we get to the right person at that house or apartment? Now, the choices that we're labeling, we're defining our address, really have to be defined ahead of time. Right? As the business decides what cities will, will we deliver pizzas in, what are valid streets? What do we put if there is no apartment? Do we leave it blank? Do we put all zeros? Do we put dashes? Right? What is the matching for no apartment? So that's part of what has to be defined ahead of time. So let's take that over into our IT and our cloud lifecycle management. And across the top, you'll see service levels, application tiers, the business function, the business criticality. So I'm going to start off with just simply dev, prod, test, QA. So where do we put it if we request a new service? If it's the development group, well, we don't want them delivering it to the production environment. So we're going to label their systems so they go to prod. But we need to know where they're delivering it to. If it's a web server, does it need to go out to an in-house only, or does it go out into the DMZ so we can see it from the internet? So all of these together help us identify where we're delivering it. If we look at a couple of other choices, we have tenant. So which customer, whether it's a department or a, a separate company, where do we deliver their services? Do they have a specific pool of computers? Is it a specific location? So in this case, we have a tenant called marketing is getting labeled so that they go into pool X. So marketing gets labeled on the tenant, and it has to match where they're going. There's our resource set. This will be a computer. And since it's labeled as a web, we're going to put it on a network that actually has DMZ or internet access. And at the very bottom, you'll see that we can apply options. In a previous session, we talked about options. But we can use the tags to identify what the option will apply to. 
So databases are allowed to have four CPUs, but web servers can't. So the database in this case will allow that option to apply to that resource set or that computer. Now remember the next step was what rules apply. So first of all, you start off with what are we applying? And you'll see the places we can apply tags. There's a lot of choices, but on the one side, on the left-hand side, you see the requestable objects. These are the things that could be requested, the what we want to deliver, our pizza, for example. And then at the bottom, we see who the customer is. Right? So we can tag those to say, here's who or what needs to be delivered. And then on the right-hand side, some choices of where are we delivering to, whether it's the compute pool, the ESX host, the location, the server, Amazon, wherever we're going to put it out. The network container, which helps us define things like what's the network access? Is it a DMZ? Is it a database zone? So where do they deliver it to? And then virtual storage pools. Do they get the, the high redundancy or is it just the, the scratch tape equivalent? So the tags in the requestable offering, notice the service blueprints, can help us determine where it gets delivered. Now the final step of that, of course, is looking at the policies in place. So you have our service blueprints starting off here. It could be tenants as well. We look at our policies. Now remember in the pizza delivery, our policies were all about find the right street, find the right house number, find the right customer. In this one, we're looking at the policies to determine does it go to which compute pool or which network container or, and I guess, which storage pool and it could be a combination of all these. So we define the rules. So following that through, we have the service blueprint is labeled with an SLA of gold. So they get gold level service level agreement. The service governor component is looking at our policy that says match the SLA on the compute pool. And ultimately what ends up happening is instead of going to the silver compute pool, it matches the tag on SLA gold, matches the blueprint, and so now we deploy it to our gold compute pool. So really, ultimately, what we're looking at is tags are all about matching what we want and where we need it to go. And we have to predefine those way back at the beginning so that we can select them, we have control, and we have the capability of having a nice, flexible environment. Because think about it, gold, silver could be in two locations, in the QA and the prod. So think of it just like we saw with the pizza address. That's where we're going with tags. For more information about tags and cloud lifecycle management, see the documentation on BMC's website, see more presentations at BMC TV, and of course, our classes are always available at bmc.com education. We look forward to seeing you in a future class. Thank you.